Hi there. The purpose of this segment is to demo the job planning and control functionality in AMT. Now, the context of this is the scenario where there's a central group managing equipment and they are outsourcing or um, having the work performed by regional branches or sites. So a central group managing the equipment but branches performing the work for them. Now, there's two ways that this can work. One is where only the central group have access to AMT. And that's the process that we'll talk through now. And then we'll have a look at where the site have some limited access to AMT. In both scenarios, the process is the same. So if we just look at the workflow process, the first step is identifying the work that needs to be performed. And this comes from two sources. The first is strategy tasks in AMT. And those are uh, sometimes called maintenance plans, but these are the items that you're scheduling, your planned work, your PM services, your component changeouts. AMT will automatically create work orders for those when they're due. The second is defects that are identified, and these can come from a number of sources, but most commonly they're identified on site through uh, inspections or being reported by customers or operators. And in that situation, the defect can be captured on, say, a manual piece of paper, emailed through to the central group, and they can enter them into AMT. The planning grid in AMT holds a list of all jobs that need to be planned and performed. So both the planned strategy tasks and the defects. The next step is the central group will review those authorize them and ensure that the scope has been correctly defined. And from there, the central group will really communicate that work plan to the site or the branch where the site will perform the planning. And they will go through their normal process for planning the work. They will create a work order, say in DBS or whatever their accounting or work order system is, They'll order the parts. They'll go through all the normal processes to plan and schedule the work, perform the work, and then once it's completed, they will communicate that back to the central group. So again, that could be just a completed job folder page or work, what we call a work scope or service report. And they will also, at the same time, go through and update the work order. And once the work order is closed, that information is also fed back to AMT. So both the status of the work is updated in AMT, but then also we get the financials back. So in this scenario, there's three main points of communication. There's the initial defect capture. There's the sending the authorized work to the site to perform. And then there's the feedback once the site has, has performed it. Now, the second scenario is where the site do have limited access to AMT. So in this situation, the process is identical. It's just when the site identify a defect, they enter that straight into AMT. The means of communicating to the site that work is ready to be performed is the site have a screen that they can view and see the status of the work. Um, and they can see once it's authorized and ready to be performed. And once the work is completed, the site update that status, and that is visible to the central group. So it's the same process, it's just you have the option of eliminating sort of three email points. Now this is the scenario that we'll, that we'll um, go through in AMT, is more the scenario two. But scenario one works, um, it's the same process, it's just there's a couple of manual steps. So let me jump into AMT now. Okay, so this is the main navigation of, um, of AMT. And if we just go into the planning area of AMT. So this is the short-term planning screen. And this is really what everything revolves around. And this shows a complete listing of all the work that needs to be performed. So if it's highlighted green on the left-hand side, that means that AMT has automatically created it. It's a planned or it's a strategy task. 
if we find one where, and I'll just group it by equipment, so you can group and sort this grid in a number of ways. So if we just look at equipment GIO4, and um, if we scroll down, we can see here there's two that are shaded blue. These are just general defects that have been registered in AMT. Now, that, there are two ways to get a defect into AMT, or two prime ways. The first is just from this screen. The planner can click a plus and manually enter it in. But if it's if you're wanting to get the site to register a defect, you probably don't want uh, your inspectors and some of the field service guys having access directly to this planning area. So what you can do is on the main menu, under the daily operations, is a quick backlog capture form. So this is, um, uh, and by user, you can nominate who can see what. So it might be that the inspector only sees quick backlog capture. There might be a couple of other things that might be relevant. But essentially, they wouldn't see all the rest of this in AMT. They would just see two or three options, the one being quick backlog capture. So let's just step through the process that they have identified a defect. So let's say they've identified a defect for our GRO4. They highlight it on the right-hand side. Double click, quick backlog capture. It calls up a template that is pre populated with the equipment. They can put a description of the defect. So we could say, um, I don't know, torn operator seat. Uh, enter the component code. I'm not sure if we've got one for operator seat. Let's just have a look. Uh, yeah, 7312, operator seat. Uh, we'll call this a general repair. Uh, estimated labor hours to complete it, say two hours. Duration, two hours. Which work group should perform it? Uh, the source, uh, it was picked up on a daily inspection. Uh, who raised it, so you can nominate the person who, who raised it. Uh, what the priority is and when it should be performed, maybe at the next planned stoppage. Um, now at this point, if the inspector is not sure if this item has actually been raised already, they can click this little filter button at the bottom here, and this shows all the existing defects against that piece of equipment. So they can quickly have a look and see, okay, there's nothing here about an operator seat. And then they can save that. And that defect is now is now captured. So that's the process to capture a defect. So the next step in the process is for the central planner to be reviewing all of these items and identifying, uh, and first of all, authorizing the work and ensuring that it's correctly scoped. Now, let me just group this by task type. And what we've got is we've got uh, the component change outs, we've got the general repairs, uh, the servicing, and um, so let's uh, let's just go and have a look at um, one of these items. So the first thing is is to is to uh, authorize it. Now you can set AMT that if it's a planned item, it's automatically authorized. I do you need to authorize the PM servicing if it's part of your maintenance regime? Um, but um, the next step uh, with the authorization, so if I just um, open up one of these items. So this is opening up the AMT work order. And um, so here we have the job ready status. So this has been authorized, but the central planner hasn't nominated that it's all ready to be done. So if he checks the parts ready, status, once it's green, it's then been nominated as job ready. And that's really the communication to the site to say once it's job ready, it's ready to be performed. So this is the job ready indicator here. So if something's green, that's really the communication to the site to say, right, you can go ahead and do it. If it's yellow, it means it hasn't yet been authorized. Or if it's any other color, most often uh, sort of orange, 
uh, then it means it's waiting for something. It hasn't been correctly scoped or there aren't the right parts on site, um, anything like that. But really from a site's perspective, once the central planner has got it shaded green, that means that it's ready for them to be, uh, uh, for them to perform. Um, just coming back to this job ready uh, status, about defining the scope. So the central planner can uh, sort of enter any planning notes. They can link documents. So these could be standard job instructions. So in AMT, you can maintain a library of documents. Um, a job can be made up of many operations. And for each operation, you can have your parts listed down your labor requirements, any other special tooling or anything like that. So this is really what we mean by defining the scope, is making sure it's very clear to the site what work needs to be done. Now, AMT does have a full standard job system. So if it's something like a PM service, if you set it up in your strategy linked to a standard job, then when it creates a work order, it will automatically bring all of these parts in. And that's the case here. That where it's got strategy, quantity, strategy, it means it's come from the strategy, um, which is um, that strategy task was set up with a standard job. So it means the planner doesn't every time have to go and enter all the parts required. So a lot of efficiencies can be gained by having, um, having standard jobs set up for your planned work. Uh, similarly with your job instructions, when you set up your strategy task, you can associate all job instructions, either attached documents or electronically build check sheets. And uh, again, when you then create the work order, when AMT creates the work order, it automatically brings all that information in. So once something is job ready, there are a number of um, the sites can then visibly see that it's job ready and for each one of these items they can then come and print they can either open it up just like we have done um, or they can come and print a number of these reports they can print out their job folders um, they can print out their weekly work plans um, what we call a work scope which is all the detailed instructions and parts required for that job so um, so it's, uh, uh, let me just see if we can uh, print out one of these items. Uh, which one, which one? Well, let's just go to print job folder. Okay, so this is... Um, uh, this is probably a little bit detailed. I'm not sure if you can see it on your screen, but it's just your standard, uh, what we call a work scope around defining what work needs to be done, any planning notes, any instructions, job instructions, a listing of all the parts required. So this can, can be uh, printed out by the site and given to the mechanic to go and perform the work. So this screen really fulfills a number of functions. The first is it allows the central planner to see all the work that needs to be done and to authorize that work. And it's the means of communicating to the site because they can have access to this. Maybe they can only have read-only access um, or by person you can define what access they have. And they can see which are the job-ready items, which are the ones that are authorized and ready to be performed. They can then perform that work. They can enter their planning information. They can say when it's scheduled to be done. And, um, and then once the works, and then they would go through their normal processes to perform the work. Uh, they would open work orders within DBS or their uh, work order system, perform the work. And then once it's performed, they come in here and they change the status to completed. So at this point, they, they can come and um, change the status. So again, this grid provi provides the means for communicating back to the central uh, office what the status of work is. Has it been scheduled? And, has it, and uh, once it's been performed, they can update the status to completed. So that really covers that um, 
sort of process of being able to communicate to the sites, they perform the work and communicate back. Now, there are a number of control reports in AMT for the central group to understand the status of work. So uh, typical um, reporting around your maintenance efficiency. So here we've got some planning reports. Uh, typical ones would be things like service accuracy. So this is how many, uh, what percentage of services are performed within a 10% tolerance of the service interval, i.e. 250 hours. Uh, backlog aging. So what's the average aging of your backlogs? So I've just run that report, the backlog aging. And in this case, I ran it by, uh, let me just expand this a little bit. So backlog aging, your average number of days, and I did it by task type. So component change out, general repairs, PM services, etc. And uh, this shows the average days, and then below it's got average number of days. Uh, sorry, average number of backlogs. Now we could run the same report, but instead of analyzing it by the different task types, we could analyze it by, say, priority. And then there's a number of other sort of reports. You can, there's also reports around the, um, the quality and efficiency of work performed. So, um, this one, the mean time to first stoppage after a PM, for example, measures the quality of PM services, maintenance ratios, redo, uh, breakdown percentages and things like that. So, um, so there are, um, control reports. The, the other control that is in place is anything that is flagged as a safety item. So if I just come back to this planning grid and if I have something that is flagged as a safety item, uh, so this is the fire system inspection. That's probably a safety item. And it has been, it's, it's been flagged as safety under this, um, under this, uh, categorization here. And once it gets flagged as a safety item, the user cannot edit the source, the date it was notified, and the description. It won't let me save any changes to these fields. And, and it can't be deleted. So anything that is flagged as a safety item um, can't be, those key fields can't be edited, it can't be deleted. Um, so it will always stay standing as outstanding until it is performed. So that provides quite a good control over the, your key um, statutory items that need to be performed. So it's actually OHS, which is um, it can apply to not just safety but also um, environmental or, or statutory as well. So um, so that just provides that additional control that items can't get logged. As a general rule, most no work orders in AMT can actually be, de be deleted. They can only be abandoned. And which means they stay in the system and you can always go and have a, a search through to see what were the items that were abandoned and what were the causes. So again, that just provides an additional level of control. Okay, so if I just go back to the flow diagram. So this is the process that we've gone through uh, very quickly. Again, the work identification coming from the two sources, the central group, scope and authorize it. They then communicate to the sites, and there's a number of ways that can be done, but the most efficient is if the site has access to AMT, they can just see what is ready to be performed. The site goes through their normal process to perform the work, and once it is performed, they merely just update the job status, the date, and the fact that it's completed, and that then is visible back to the central planning group. That also has the impact of, if it's something like a PM service, then rescheduling future PM services or future component change outs. Okay, so I think that completes, um, completes this, this segment.